This is a GCSE video about work and power. Don't forget you can visit my website, loveatphysics.com, for some uh, resources and ideas and exam questions, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Energy. You've all heard the word energy. What is energy? Well, there are lots of different types of energy. Um, and all of them are measured in joules. Okay, and we use a big capital J for joules. Now, there are 10 different types of energy, and I'll tell you them all, and I'll give you examples of each one. So, first one is magnetic potential. Magnetic potential is when you have two magnets, they have the potential, potential means possibility, they have the possibility to change that energy into something else like movement. So when you hold two magnets close to each other, they either attract or repel. So they've got magnetic potential energy. Then we've got K for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is anything moving. Then we've got H for heat energy. Anything that is hot has heat energy. Then we've got L for light energy. Heat is sometimes called thermal energy. And then we've got L for light energy. Then we've got G for gravitational potential. Remember, potential means the possibility to convert that energy into something else like movement. And so gravitational potential energy is when you hold something high up, it has gravitational potential energy. It has the possibility, the potential to convert that energy into movement, into kinetic energy when you drop it. So the higher something is, the more gravitational potential energy it has. Then we have chemical potential. Chemical potential is in batteries, it's also in your food that you eat. It's anything that is a chemical that can be used or burned to produce other types of energy. So, for example, in your food, you use your chemical energy to produce movement um, or sound, like I'm doing at the moment, kinetic energy or sound energy, which is our next one. Or... You use it in a battery to do something electrical, or you can use it in an, as petrol in your car, and that causes kinetic energy as well. It can be converted into kinetic energy as well. So you've got all of these types of energy so far. Our next one is electrical potential. Again, electrical potential, because it has the potential, the possibility to be converted into another type of energy very easily. So, for example, uh, use your, your battery would store chemical potential. That would be converted into electrical potential in the wires, and then that would light up a bulb, and it would be converted from electrical potential energy into light energy. So, the next one is elastic potential. When you get a, an elastic band or a spring, you stretch it out, and again, it has the possibility, the potential to convert that energy into something else like kinetic, and when you let go, it does that. So elastic potential, it stores that energy as, as potential energy there, elastic potential. And the last one is a little bit harder to imagine, but it's nuclear energy. And nuclear energy is inside the nucleus of an atom, it's what holds atoms together, and it's also what provides us with energy through nuclear reactors or nuclear bombs. On the left here I've put a handy way of trying to remember all of these ones the first letters of each one match up with most kids hate learning GCSE energy names, which I'm sure isn't true. Now there's one important thing to remember about energy, and that is that you cannot create or destroy energy. You just change it from one form to another. 
For example, I'm speaking at the moment and my chemical energy inside my body is being converted into sound energy as it's coming out my mouth. The exact same amount of energy that is being used up, the chemical energy that's being used up, is being converted into sound. Now it's not just sound, there's a little bit of heat as well because the vibrations are heating up the surroundings and also my mouth is experiencing a little bit of friction, so my mouth is heating up a little bit. But all of the energy I'm putting in, the same amount of energy is coming out. Now that's the same with absolutely everything on Earth and in the universe. You cannot create energy and you cannot destroy energy. You just change it into different forms. And what's good to do at this stage is to look around you and see if you can see things and work out which of our 10 energies is going into the device and which of the 10 energies is coming out. Now, usually there's more than one energy coming out. Usually some of them are useful and some of them are wasted. And we're gonna come onto that a little bit later when we're talking about efficiency. Before we do that though, we need to think about converting this to different forms. Now there's lots of different applications that we can use that convert energy. And when anything converts energy, we say that it does work. So, for example, you do work against gravity when you walk up a hill. You convert some of your chemical potential energy into gravitational potential energy. So, you're converting energy, so you're doing work. Now, the work done in that case is against gravity. You're also doing work against friction. So, your chemical energy is going into the friction of your feet on the ground and that is heating up your shoes slightly so you're doing work against friction. Any work that you do is converting energy from one form to another. Now we can talk about work with numbers by saying that work is the force that is put in times the distance that that force that that force moves an object. So work done is force times distance. Now that distance has to be in the same direction as the force, so we say that the distance is parallel to the force. For example, if I lift this pen up, I'm going against gravity, the force is going this way, and the distance is going this way. So I'm doing work against gravity. However, if I move it this way, I'm doing no work against gravity because it's not moving parallel to the force of gravity. I am doing work against air resistance and stuff like that, but not against gravity. So the distance has to be parallel to the force. So we've got an equation for work done there. And work done, because it's an energy, it's how much energy you're converting, it's measured in joules. We know that force is measured in newtons and distance is measured in meters. So work done is measured in joules and it's the amount of energy you are transferring. Now, we often talk about something being powerful. A computer is powerful or a person is powerful. Now in physics, Power is the amount of energy you can transfer every second. The amount of energy transferred per second or per unit of time. Now we've just found out that energy transferred is the same as work. So power also equals work done over time. Now, power has its own special units. We could use joules per second, but actually, we give joules per second an even better name after the person who invented it called Mr. Watt. So, power is measured in watts. So, power is energy transferred per unit of time or per second, or the same thing, really. Power is work done over time. So if we're talking about, for example, a powerful car, the powerful car transfers more energy per second than a not so powerful car. And that makes sense. A powerful car, we think, yeah, it can go really fast, it can accelerate really quickly. 
and that means that more chemical energy is transferred into kinetic energy in one second, so the car goes faster. This applies to anything that transfers energy. Again, have a look in the room around you, see if you can spot something, work out how powerful it is. Some electrical appliances even have the power in what's written on them, and that's how much electrical energy they transfer every second. If this was helpful, don't forget to subscribe or visit my website for more resources and some practice exam questions.